All right. Can everyone hear me? Yes. You both. Okay. All right. All right. This is the new book that's coming out. It's going to publishing. This is the origin of life on planet Earth. It's called Planetary Genesis, Stargate DNA, and Humans Extraterrestrial Origin. Wow. Ain't it nice? Bahim Tecumseh El Bay, Arte Washita Ish. Arte Washita Ish Nasu Fahim. All right. Arte Washita Ish Nasu Ali. All right, so this is the new book, Planetary Genesis, Stargate DNA, and Humans' Extraterrestrial Origin. Um, my wife and I decided to write this book because uh, many don't know the origin of life on planet Earth, and this is something of which that we have to deal with. You know, um, as the saying goes, is not just from where you at, but where you're from. <laughs> of course, we had to um, go back <laughs> and do a little reverb on um, the God Rakim's quote from years ago. Because <laughs> he said, um, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at. And what we're saying is that... Um, is not just from where you at, it's where you're from. All right, so <laughs> we're going to deal with that subject today. Um, reason why, because, yes, you know your Washita heritage, and that's beautiful, but also know that this was not the first planet in which that we came to. And I'll go into proving everything simply by scholarship, factual information, shamanism, meaning information coming from our indigenous ancestors. When you listen to the Dogon, when you listen to the South Africans, when you listen to um, the various other tribes in Africa, as well as also our indigenous heritage here from the Hopis and um, from the other tribes, um, here in the Americas, as well as the Aboriginal tribes in Australia, they all speak about the fact of our origin of world, that we just did not originate here on planet Earth. We came here. So when people talk about um, that they're just African or when they, or even when we just talk about, people just talk about that they're just American. You know, um, I never went along with either of those. Um, I agreed wholeheartedly and 100% with Dr. Khaled Muhammad. He said Africa was our throne and we ruled our home, which is 196,400,000 square miles called planet Earth. So we just... He said, do you just want to claim a spot or the whole thing? And as Moors, wherever we put our foot at on any water or land, as you know, the word moor includes land. The word moors is include waters. So wherever you step your foot at, as a moor, that is, becomes your home. No matter the seven continents. And that's just what it is. This is the reason why they took away that title more. You was called a black or more. But they took the a more part off and just left you was black. Something fishy about the fact that the Albion don't want you to use the word or title more. No, but they know that leave us. 
and the disinheritable and non descendants. Right. And that's mm-hmm. why they did it. But we we right. of the land, uh the land of the earth, not only the Americas but of the earth period. So where did right. that put them at? See, that's exactly. that, that's what they <laughs> that's what they don't want to deal with. Right. Exactly. So this is a new book. Um, it's been a year and a half working on this book. It's 500 pages. And it goes into the origin of life coming from Sirius, you know, Orion constellations, to Saturn, to Mars, to Meldic, Malona, to Tiamat, Earth, Venus, Mercury, and etc. The sun itself is a portal or a gateway. There's a video on TikTok that shows an African man ascending up into the sun itself. Yes, ascending up into the sun. And the Negroes in America was like, ah, that's BS, ah, la, la, la. The Africans are saying, no, that's real. We see that all the time. We see that all the time. That is something in which that we know is real. So, see, we have two different concepts. We have a limitation, a mental limitation, while the Africans, even though they've been colonized in a lot of regards and have been religiousified, we see that they are a little bit more less limited, I should say. In their mentality. Hey, Doc, I'm going to tell you what's, 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 what's funny right now is that me and my wife just was watching all of the series of Stargate, the old series. Yeah. We just did like a whole marathon where we was watching all of the Stargates. And then I literally just read Science of Creation by Dr. York and was looking at Scroll number 82, extraterrestrial, what is it called, extraterrestrial involvement? Mm-hmm. And, they, and, and, and now you pop up and got the book about to come out. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. We all connected. Yeah. That just let me you know. You see, Dr. Like, York let did me know it. I'm on the right frequency. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And see, Dr. York, he did an all right job, but the information was limited in those books. We have so much more information now until there's no limit. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in a minute here, that when you start adding the genetics, when you start adding in the haplotypes, the haplogroups, when you start adding in quantum physics, Astrotheology, metaphysics, physics, mathematics, it all comes out to the fact that ye are gods and that your origin is not just on planet Earth. And so when you start going into the history, when you start going into the esoteric teachings, the occult teachings, it just fits all this information together into what was once a pieces of a puzzle. It makes it actually a, a puzzle in which that now you're looking at as a whole. It becomes more holistic. You know, we took information in which that Dr. York um, utilized as far as stating that we are the reptilians, but we explained it um, a little bit more in depth about the traits of the reptilians and different things like that. And so it gives us a better outlook on 
who's who on planet Earth, and how to um, actually look at each other and being able to deal with each other in a more holistic manner as we're not just one species. We are a combination of 22 different species. And this is how we got our 22 basic amino acids called protein makeup in which that our body is composed of. These are actually 22 different alien or extraterrestrial life strands in which that we was formed from. The main one is our Syrian heritage. So I'm going to get into that right now, and you will start seeing how this puzzle come together here. Um, when you're dealing with this information, these are the chapters. We have 13 chapters. The first chapter is melanin, carbon, dark matter, and black energy. The second chapter is the holographic universe and the human hologram. The third is planetary genesis. The fourth is do extraterrestrial or extraterrestrial beings exist? Five, secret of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Eight, 11 dimensions. Excuse me, six, 11 dimensions. Seven, Macabre, the original IFO UFO. Eight, Elijah, Mars, Modic, and the Botswana people. Nine, the moon, man-made UFOs, fake alien invasions, and demonic possession. Ten, the lizard man, reptilians, and graves. Eleven, Saturn, light ships, and ring ring makers. Twelve, human-like genetic replicas, synthetic duplicates, roboids, humanoids, robotic, RNA, DNA doubles, skin masks, and transhumanism. And 13, the final subject is OMG equals GMO, Mm -hmm. aborted fetus, vaccines, and cannibalism. All right, so these are 13 chapters in the book. And we give a shout out to our um, Moorish heritage, as well as also to those who contributed to the information in the book. Uh, we reached out to Michelle Gibson, and she gave a review of the book. And also, um, Dr. Fahim, um, um, L, as well as Brother um, Ani Asar, Asaru. Um, these are the individuals who gave us some feedback. So I appreciate them. And so we talk about in the beginning our cream existence state, the 76 trillion years ago. The minds or souls of us via ancestors existed from a previous universe called this multiverse is the omniverse, the all, that formed this current universe. The visible vapors of self-creation called nine ether, dark matter, divine mind, ancestral or universal consciousness, infinite spirit called prana or breath. That's what formed this universe, our ancestors. No longer in human form, but that mind, that soul of us still exists after what you refer to as physical death. And now we refer to it as infinite spirit or universal consciousness. His form is also referred to as prana or breath. 
So the breath of life in which that you have is the same as when in the Genesis it say it states specifically that God breathed into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul. So you have the breath of God, the breath of the ancestors in you. In physics, we refer to it as centripetal force and centrifugal force, push and pull, inhale and exhale. All right, so. So we get into the three stages of what they refer to as dark matter, dark energy, melanin. All right. It's called triple stage darkness. In the Quran, Holy Quran, Surah 39, verse 6, says man is created in the womb of his mother. Creation after creation in triple darkness. That triple darkness or that Arabic phrase, Tuluma. Ting, tulumating, the Latin means triple stage darkness. Indicate three dark regions involving the development of the embryo. You have the abdominal wall, the uterine walls, and the amniotic sac, which is a giant egg. All right. Essentially, in the Kabbalistic teachings, that would be the Ein, Ein Sof, and Ein Sofi R. Ein means nothing. Ein Sof, limitless nothing. And Ein Sofi R, limitless light. In which that those three stages brings forth manifestation. Those three stages is what we refer to as... You will see here the 16th and 18th letter within the Hebrew and Arabic. As you see, that's what Ein is. You see here, Ein, it is Omicron in Greek in a proto-Canaanite alphabet. It comes to the name Inu. Inu is the same word as Ainu, which means I. All right, and the 16th Hebrew alphabet is Ein, also, which is an I. There's no coincidence that the 16th alphabet within Hebrew is Ein, but the card for this within the Terra deck, a Terak deck, is the devil. This is where you get the term evil eye. And even though it's telling you it's an evil eye, it's supposedly, it's supposedly keep the eye of someone else who's looking at you evil off of you, that they can't attack you with their thought perception and their energies from their eyes because you do release prana or chi or ki energy from the eyes. Negative energy. All right. In the original script, of Arabic, it is also the 16th letters. Sometimes it's the 18th, depending on if they add um, the last two letters of Arabic. Some scripts have the last two, some don't. It depends on who you learn in the alphabet, Arabic alphabet from. So here it is also the 16th Arabic alphabet, Ain. So 
So when you read Matthews, the sixth chapter, the 22nd verse, it says the light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be sig signal, si um, single, single, thy whole body shall be fill filled or full of light. Now, of course, this esoterically is reference to the pineal gland, which is the master endocrine gland and is the medium between the physical world and the spiritual world. So when we're looking at these three veils of life itself, Ein, Ein, Sof, Ein, Sophie, Ur, and the fact is, is that within Arabic and Hebrew, it comes up to the 16th or 18th alphabet, depending on which script you read. We're looking at life itself being formed not just within the womb, but within space and time. So we're looking at, once again, Ein would be dark energy. Ein Sof would be black matter. And Ein Sophie Ur would be carbon, i.e. melanin, which is made from carbon, as well as hydrogen, nitrogen, etc. So when you read a Kabbalistic script about Ein, Ein, Sof, Ein, Sof, Ur, think in terms of quantum physics, black matter, black um, energy, dark matter, and melanin. Those are the three stages. That's triple stage darkness. Repeat them again, Doc. Matter of fact, I'll show you. Black energy. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, let's see if we go. Yeah. Can you ask me? Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, here we go, right here. You see black energy, which makes up 73% of the totality of the universe. Then you have dark matter, which makes up 23%. And then you have 1% less, which makes up what is called the visible spectrum. Intergalactic gas, stars, suns, moons, us, etc. All that is carbon, i.e. melanin. All right, so Ein is dark energy. Ein Sof is black matter or dark matter. And then Ein Sophie Ur is carbon, i.e. melanin. When you read the Kabbalistic scripts about Ein, Ein Sof, Ein Sophie Ur, and it talks about the three veils, those are the same three veils within a woman's pregnancy in which that molds and shapes you into existence. She's the creator. She's the fashioner. The 13th attribute of Allah is called al-musarweru. Al-musarweru means the fashioner. That's a feminine aspect, a feminine attribute. Okay. Mm 
Now, for y'all to understand this, you go to the New Testament. When the early instructions dealing in religions, in particular Christianity, Judaism, you can go to um, Genesis, the first chapter, 27 verse, which clearly suggest that God himself, too, was both male and female. It says, the one God manifests attributes of both genders, for he became both fathers and mothers to his children. You get the book, God and Woman. You go to Ruth 1, 21. It says, the Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. Naomi calls upon two divine names. The first is Yahweh, or Enki, symbolized in DNA, and Enlil, combined into a divine entity, Yahweh. The second is El Shaddai, which is Enlil, which El, as Dr. Gore discussed, means breasted one. It also means God. Breasted one. In the New Testament, God is speaks about breastfeeding. First Peter second chapter third verse. It says, As, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted the Lord is gracious. Hebrew 5, 12, 13. And when for a time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracle of God, and all become such as need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he as a babe. Isaiah forty two fourteen. God is the speaker. Like a woman in labor, I groan, I pant, and gasp. Forty six three. God is a mother carrying the family of Jacob which is to say Israel. God speaks or speaks in 4915. Can a woman forgive her baby who nursed at her breast? Or forget, excuse me, can a woman forget her baby who nursed at her breast? This is God, the mother, nursing her children. In the lost Hebrew gospel quoted by early Christian writers, Jesus or Yahshua, calls the Holy Spirit his mother. The Holy Trinity, as we call it, Father, Mother, which is the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Son, Jesus, Yahshua, made in the image of God, every human is understood as both energy, male and female, in one. Please do not confuse this bodily unification with homosexuality. This is androgenism, but then one, this is talking about combining of the left hemisphere, which is analytical, rational, and the right hemisphere of the brain, which is holistic, abstract. The unification of both hemispheres is what gives you the ability in order to have more access to your mind power. All right, so consciousness now is, can stars be conscious? Well, we break down the fact is that stars are actually the minds of our ancestors. 
That's what stars are. Stars are the minds of our ancestors. So can stars be conscious? Of course they can be because they are the minds of our ancestors. All right? Now, there's some things called biological UFOs, right? This is taught within Islam. They was called jinns, all right? Zachariah ibn Madul, uh, Muhammad ibn Mahmu uh, Abu Yanyu al-Kawini states that the jinns or aerial animals with transparent bodies which can assume various forms. That's what a jinn is. So when you hear Muslims or those who study Islam speaks about jinns, this is really what they're talking about. Aerial animals with transparent bodies which can assume various forms. This is an actual jinn as you see right here in the sky. This is the jinn. You can't see it too well. I'm pulling it up. That's in the actual sky. You can see these things in the sky. They're called rods. Air rods. R-O-D-S. Okay. All right. These flying rods also refer to a sky fish. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have other pictures because I'm not playing. So when we're talking about these UFOs, biological UFOs, sometimes they're all rides or flying a fish or aerial animals, plasmic creatures in our skies. This is one aspect. All right, just one aspect. All right, these um, aerial genes comprises only one category of plasma life form. The air rods or elementals or another form of plasmic life form shown as we showed in the previous photos or photographs. All right. Here are some others. This is based on infrared photographs and other images of creatures in the sky that are not birds. Some of these are what is called negative orbs. And these negative orbs can become attached to your auric field. There are also angelic and positive orbs as well which could be your ancestors, and they walk with you, as they would say. But there are also negative orbs who are not your ancestors, and these are called familiars within the occult teachings. And they can do damage and harm to your auric field and create holes and leaks in your auric field in which that produces ailments, sickness, disease, Etc. And sometimes you have to deal with orbs, these negative orbs, generationally. In other words, shit passed down from your mother and father, grandma, grandfathers, going back. And you have to correct their shit so that you won't be affected. This is the purpose of having a shrine and having an altar so that you can call on the ancestors who are positive 
who changed your shitty ass diapers, who gave you money as a child, as a youth, who loved you, hugged you, kissed you on your forehead and told you, don't worry about that boo-boo, you be good, go and play. These are the ones that loved you. They didn't dehumanize you. They built you up. They loved you. They cared about you. Genuinely. So these are the ones that you want to call into your life. Because the energy of their life still exists. Subtly, but yet still exists. And that subtleness can help you out of a grave amount of dangerous situations. Give brothers Edward Bruce Bynum's book, Dark Light Consciousness, Melanin, Serpent Power, and the Luminous Matrix of Reality. In this book, he speaks about Gaia, infos the earth, and also extends into the vast darkness of the interstellar space where visible light is, but approximately 7% of the luminous matter and the other approximate 93% is unseen. This unseen reality is apparently composed of a mysterious darkness that, together with space-folding gravity, surrounds our galaxy and holds the constellations together. In other words, it's the glue that holds everything in orbit. For all intents and purposes, this is God of this universe as there are multiverses. Anyone who watches Dragon Ball Super, you can see a concept of this with them having originally tw um, 11 universes. Some of them universes got destroyed. But over these universes, was a little entity And then you had the rulers over the galaxies. And then you had rulers over the solar system. And they show you this rank and file system of the gods. This is similar to what we're talking about that you might have seen on Dragon Ball Super. If you've never watched it, I suggest that you go and check it out and you can get a concept of what we're talking about here because this is the same thing as we as we are talking about here in the book that you will also see on Dragon Ball Super. All right? So right here, Stars are the condensation of the divine minds or souls of our ancestors who came from the previous universe. This is what I was talking about. And this is found in the book Black Root Science. At the end of the previous universe, our ancestors expanded their mind beyond measure until it encompassed the whole universe. That process of expansion caused a apparent contraction 
of their universe until it was reduced to the size of a single planet. In stages in the empty space surrounding the new earth, creating the seven substance, magnetism, electricity, light, heat, elect, um, energy, and etc., which eventually formed the new stars after many trillions of years. So this is how life came into existence in this particular universe. It came from the minds, the divine minds and souls of our ancestors from a previous universe. This is whom you refer to as God or the minds, souls of our previous ancestors. You refer to the one God is Allah, God of the Bible, Yahweh in Hebrew, Krishna, or Brahma, Vishnu, that Holy Trinity coming together within the Hindu text. Some just refer to Nam Yehudin Gekiyo or Om, the creative word made flesh, as we would say in the book of John. So since stars are the minds of our ancestors, we come to find out that we also come from the stars. In fact, Neil deGrasse Tyson, astrophysicist, states, so that when I look up at the night sky, I know that, yes, we are part of the universe. We are in the universe. But perhaps more importantly, that both of these facts are that the universe is in us. When I reflect on that fact, I look up. Many people feel small because they're small and the universe is big. But I feel big because my atoms came from those stars. So your atoms come from the minds of the ancestors, referred to as a condensation of the stars. Now you know how you got here once again. The atoms that your body is composed of came from those stars. And those stars are the minds or souls of your ancestors. That's how you physically got here. Now, we said condensation. Stars are the condensation of the minds of the ancestors. Condensation means coming from a light into matter. And since your body is apparent matter, frozen light, because that's what matter is, is frozen light. You are your ancestors in human form, as we know that. Quantum physicist states that man is physically made up of the remnants of stardust. Neil deGrasse Tyson once again says, so you are made of Detrius from exploding stars, get over it, or better yet, celebrate it. After all, what's nobler, what can one cherish than the universe lives within us all? Not only do we live among the stars, but the stars also live within us. 
And that's true because you are a byproduct of seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side, a concentration or condensation of the ancestors. And this is from his book, Death by Black Holes and Other Cosmic Quandaries. So thank those dead stars, because without them, you wouldn't be here. The calcium in your bones, the oxygen you breathe, all of that was cooked up in stars that died billions of years ago. So it wasn't Jesus who died for your sins. It was the stars that died so you can have skin. Oh, I'm going to say that shit again. Oh, you, I like the way that wrong. But... <laughs> Once again, it wasn't Jesus who died for your sins. It was stars that died billions of years ago so you can have skin. Hmm. So something did die for you, but it wasn't a white man on the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light and the bird. The light I seen was from the stars. Not no white man on the cross dying 2,000 years ago. Sorry. It didn't happen. Didn't happen then. Won't happen now. And Dr. Walter Williams already told us there was never a man in any shape, form, or fashion that ever walked the earth by the name of Jesus Christ. Session the white man. So we fooling ourselves by thinking so. But something did die for you. But it was these stars that died billions of years ago so that you can have life here upon planet Earth. It goes further, the divine spark. Editor is Graham Hancock. It writes, by weight, 93% of the matter in your body was born in the body of a star. That means there's 7% in which that you need to activate so that you can be a complete walking, talking star, a living sun. Once again, it says, we know that the stars turn matter itself into energy of light. So when you hear Christian talking about this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, 93%. Think about that, 93%. And then the other 7% in which that will help you along your journey by transforming your body into a light vehicle. A light vehicle, macabre, or a light body called the rainbow body, celestial body, incorruptible body. This is what we're talking about. So light is a catalyst in photosynthesis. We know that. So we are made of stardust and powered by starlight. This much we know. You're powered by the minds of the ancestors, the stars. You got a problem with that? Then don't go watch Lion King. Because in there, Simba's father, Mufasa, died. And he became a star in the heavens, in the sky. And when he was coming back to consciousness of who he was, twinkle, twinkle, little star, daddy began to speak to him in order to inform him that he lost his way and what he needs to be doing in life. These are the ancestors. This is what happens when you physically die, as they say. You go into the astral plane. The word astral means star plane. Oh, shit. 
You getting this? Because Newton already told you that energy can't be created nor destroyed. So where did the energy go in which that formed, created and formed your physical body? Where did it go? We know it didn't die. Cause Newton's law 101 that you was taught in physics class, chemistry class, biology class, god damn it, told you that you was white, immortal, everlasting, forever, eternal. You get this? You was told this in these classes. They can't over, they they can't understand and overstand, understand this information. They just repeat what was in the book. But common sense tell you that if you come to any spiritual conclusion that God is real, they are your ancestors in you as a unified force called the one. Yahweh. Yahshua. Allah, Krishna, whatever term it was that you want to refer to, Kukukulu, as they say within the Congo, the Kukukulu. Amen. Pata. Whatever term it was that you want to refer to that almighty power as. So, life lives on. There is no ending of life. This is why you can still talk to your ancestors. This is why you set up your shrines and your altars. in order to help them on their reincarnation if they choose to come back or help them on their next mission into a higher plane of existence, a higher dimensional density level, another realm. This is the key. So, this is why when you read the Kabbalion by the three initiates, it tells you that all is mind and everything is mental. From the mind proceeded all mental states. And yet is the mind or the conscious mind that is that we must go beyond. <clears throat> Remember, we have seven states of consciousness. We have interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, life consciousness, subconsciousness, super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. So you must go beyond the conscious mind. The conscious mind is interpersonal consciousness, intrapersonal consciousness, and life consciousness. You must go into subconsciousness what is also referred to as super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. You get must go into the four higher states of consciousness. You got to go beyond the conscious mind, which would be symbolic to the fact of you must go beyond the three lower chakras. The root chakra, the sacral, or what's called the navel chakra, and the solar plexus. You must go beyond that. You must go to the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye, and crown chakra, the four higher states of consciousness. That's what this is symbolic to. The quantum physicists and physicists states will find evidence that the universe is a giant brain. So we just finished seeing that the stars are conscious because they are the minds of our ancestors. 
the condensation of the minds of our ancestors, just like you are condensation of the ancestors themselves. You are, once again, a walking, talking star, a living sun in human form. 93% stardust particles, energy. But there's still 7% of which that you have to activate, and this is the problem. Not knowing how to activate the remaining 7%. Those different states of consciousness that we just talked about, right here, conscious mind is only 10%. You analyze, you think, you plan, short-term memory. This is the 10% of which that you use. But it's the subconscious mind, which is the remaining 90%, which includes the superconsciousness, magnetic consciousness, and infinite consciousness. This is the long-term memory, the emotions, the feelings, um, the habits, relationship patterns, addictions, involuntary bodily um, functions, creativity, development stages, spiritual connections, and intuition. This is why it says that you must go beyond the conscious mind because it is here that you begin to start developing intuition, spiritual connection. This is the development stages. All right, this is what we understand too, that the universe is holographic. Get this book by Michael Talbert, The Holographic Universe. You can read in Scientific American Magazine, March 5th, 2014. Is our universe a hologram? You can also get a book read by Robin Kelly, The Hologram, The Holo, on the Body Hologram, or The Hologram Body. I think it's the body hologram. So we understand that there are things in which that have taken place upon planet Earth, but yet not many have explained this. So, for example, when we look at the Matrix movie, it says you're living in a dream world, Neo. This is what Morpheus, Lawrence Fishburne, told Neo, of course, Mr. Anderson being played by Keanu Reeves. All right. Well, we're living in the dream world, Neo. Well, where did this come from? Well, Morpheus is the Greek god of dreams. <laughs> Mr. Sandman, when you hear that back in the 1950s, Mr. Sandman, which was a popular tune in the 1950s. Mr. Sandman is talking about not just the Sandman from uh, the Spider-Man comic books, but Morpheus. The sand symbolized the sands of time, which is talking about when you take that little, um, the timer, I guess you could say old school timer. Hourglass of time, as they call it. And they take it and turn it upside down, symbolic to Mr. Sandman. So Morpheus is the Greek god of dreams. And Morpheus told Neo, have you ever had a dream? And Neo said, you know, sure, you know. Well, we had a dream that was so real that if you was unable to wake from that dream, how would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? And Morpheus goes on, you're living in the dream world, Neo. Morpheus also tells him the Matrix is a, gener is a computer-generated dream world. A computer-generated dream world? Where he gets that? Where, where, where would he get that from? The world, this universe, is holographic. Now, that doesn't mean that emotions and feelings aren't something that you have to deal with on a daily basis, because you do. 
people run off of their emotions and their rationale. So regardless of the fact this is a hologram, your body is a hologram, this universe is holographic, you still have to contend with living on planet Earth and dealing with people with emotions, with rational, who have to make rational decisions about everyday life. But you were actually told that this was a dream world as a child. How I know that is because I know by the time I was in nursery school, four years old, I was told this tune. I was sung this tune. Row, row, row your boat gently downstream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Think about how old was you when you heard that tune. You had to be at least three, four years old. So this is one of the oldest tunes that you ever heard. And this is probably one of the first tunes that you ever heard. And it tells you in the first verse that life is but a dream. So the devil didn't lie to you and told you some way out shit. Told you as soon as you came upon planet Earth and you being cognitive of who you are, which happens around two, three, four years old, that life is but a dream. You get caught up into the scenarios of life upon planet Earth. But they told you off the bat, life is but a dream. Like I said, this is one of the earliest, if not the earliest tune we learned to sing or was sung to. So hence we were told at the beginning of our lives that life is but a dream. Therefore, don't miss the magic in this phrase. You are the magician of your own life. Therefore, if you want something to change, you change it. Because your mind is the magic wand. So what about the part where he say that this matrix is a con computer-generated consensus? Well, what we call reality is actually a causal, higher mental, similar to a computer program construct, i.e. matrix, a simulation maintained by us, our minds, and the minds of our ancestors, no longer in human form, through a causal consensus. That's the matrix that he's talking about. Neo was able to break out that matrix as he began to start believing in himself more and more and more. And this is the reason why they tear down, tear down our self-esteem self -esteem and our self-worth and our self-love. So that we would never think outside the box. Mm -hmm. That we would never give ourselves a chance to become who we truly can be. who we actually are. God in flesh, having the experience.
what scientists have found out is that there are 223, I guess you can say, for lack of a better term, extraterrestrial genes in human DNA. This is what scientists have found. 223 extraterrestrial genes in human DNA. Professor Chang, this is this is who he is right here. This is Professor Chang. This is what he found. It's called Scientist Finds Extraterrestrial Genes in Human DNA. So this is no longer believing if the Mexicans found in Peru those little men, or I should say 70% of them are men, the other, the other 30% is of the world. This is what they discovered. They already did the testing on the DNA on these beings. So the United States is acting like, ah, you know, that's BS. Ah, do you believe it? I don't believe it. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Yet Mexico just revealed that they have extraterrestrial bodies and that these bodies are over a thousand years old and they was petrified. And they showed you them on the news what looks like little grays some say oh it looks too much like et ha 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 but where do you think the et image came from if these are a thousand years old and then steven spielberg just came up with the et shit in the 90s <laughs> you know, uh, late 80s, early 90s, then, I mean, what what you think? You don't think that these people in Hollywood have access to information which that you don't? How do you think they make these billion-dollar movies? Well, of course, we just think it's a movie. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, it turned out a damn good movie. But they're spending billions and billions of dollars in these movies. And you're just saying it's a good movie. Mm. Okay. Yep, gins made from fiery smoke. I just seen that. Okay, indeed, gins made from fire and smoke, exactly. Same as the burning bush that spoke to Moses. It was on fire, but yet it was smokeless. <laughs> think about it. Think, think, think about it. That's special, y'all. Y'all know nothing about that. That's old school. <laughs> so, what other proof do we have? that we are made from extraterrestrial life. Well, this is what has been said also. David Wilcock on Ancient Aliens. DNA reveal human alien hybrids. Human hybrids, this is from the book, Human Hybrids, scientific evidence of our 800,000 year old alien legacy. Dr. John Hawkey's Anthropologists from the University of Wisconsin did a comprehensive analysis of the DNA going back 5,000 years ago or so. It was revealed that if you look at someone's DNA from 3,000 BC, over 5,000 years ago, and look at someone's DNA alive today, it has changed by 7%, meaning that our DNA has micro-evolved 
at the rate of 100 times greater than of the previous 5,000 year period in history. It is the possible that extraterrestrial humans interbreeded with us in the last 5,000 years, and that would account for the monumental changes in the structure of human DNA. Yo, Doc, I got an example of why that makes sense. Because yes. um, I'm studying all this um, AI data science stuff, you know, because I'm in IT, but mm -hmm. like with computers, which they, you know, you know, we all learned that the I think it's the capacitor or what the the thing that allows the computer to compute doubles every year. Right. So that just makes sense that the right. fact computers and AI, all this neural network stuff is nothing but a cheap version of the mind and the brain that um even with us we that's all it is every couple of thousands of years or however the you know however it goes, but all that stuff mimics us. So if the computer exactly. could it, it's getting it from it's, us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And that's that's just common facts and common sense. You look at the television, it says television vision. So that means that the television is based off the vision in which that we can see in our mind's eye. That's what the television is. Is our mind's eye in physical form. Picture that can be downloaded via cable satellite, uh, et cetera, nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. A camera is photography, pictures, photographs. It's nothing more than a caption in which that we can see with our physical eye and still frame it into our short-term memory, which transfers to long-term memory which is nothing more than RNA, which symbolizes short-term memory, to DNA, which is long-term memory. Okay. So here, according to Greg Braden, he says there are mutations in our genome that shows up 200,000 anatomic modern human years ago. Human brain is 50% larger than the nearest primate. It accounts for 80% of the neocortex area of the brain today. All this and more is from fusion of chromosome number two. However, to stabilize the fusion, there was genes that was added, genes that was silenced, genes that was deleted. Chromosome number two gives us the extraordinary capability of compassion, sympathy, empathy, and the ability to self-regulate our own biology to create a strong immunity, long, um, on longevity enzymes, as it is called. It gives us access to super learning, super memory, and super cognition. All right, you want to see that video? You can go full disclosure. Where we really came from, new evidence of ETs, Atlantis, and the pyramids by Greg Braden. Now, all right, now you get Nancy Starr's book, Star Ancestors. Nancy Red Star's book, Star Ancestors. This is what she says in the book. The Blackfoot tribe teaches that every star was once a human being. I'm going to say that again. The Blackfoot tribe, which are here, the indigenous people from here, teaches that every star was once a human being. And that means that you will become a star, like it or not. The Dakota tribe speaks of the spirits in the sky often descend to earth in human form. In other words, the stars become human. 
just like you came from the stars. And quantum physicists, astrophysicists, all these physicists are saying that you do. The Hopis called them Kachina, which has returned. Okay. The Iroquois tells of a woman fall from the sky. The Rika teaches man came from a previous world. The Algonquin tells of spirits descending from the sky under the guise of men. The Chippewa tells of Brasuni Unica, a man from the stars. The Cree speaks of the Sky Father, along with the trickster, aided man and taught man civilization. The Osage refers to the Mikaki or the Star People, according to Star Ancestors by Nancy Red Star states, when it was time to populate this earth, many spirits came from other planets. As the spirits entered the atmosphere, they took on the atomic structure, which formed into a body. When we exit, we dematerialize the atomic structure, i.e. the body. Now, you can also make that atomic structure part of your soul matrix, which is the development of what is called the light body or rainbow body, celestial body, antimantium body, incorruptible body, all these various terms, the golden dragon body, Okay, so everyone is clear on that part, right? Mm -hmm. So once again, again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Doc, so ancestors should really be spelled ancestors. Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or as, or as I call, I call them, 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 them ink stars. As in ink stars. Ink stars. Ink stars. <laughs> gotcha. Yep. All right. So the Bible even tells you the various places. Because Nancy Red Star just told you that the ancestors came down from stars, as was told to you in quantum physics. So here you have a historian of indigenous affairs telling you that your ancestors came from the stars. And here you had Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist, telling you that you came from the stars. These are different fields. And they're telling you that you came from the stars. Then you have a cartoon called the Lion King, <laughs> showing you that you came from the stars. I mean, how more apparent can, can you be? So in the book of Job, chapter 8, 38, it says, God, which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treaded upon the ways of the sea, which maketh Arturius, Orion, Pleiades and the chambers of the south, which is Sirius. These are how stars look. And as you see, the upper top left one, excuse me, right one, looks like a man in the center. Mm -hmm. 
That's an actual star. So these are stars. As we say, stars are condensation of the minds of our ancestors. So why would a star look like a shape of a man, arm, leg, leg, arm, head? So the Esophical Society states that the first man was Ethereum, a light being. All right, a light being who antenated, antenated, excuse me, formed in the course of ages, became more condensed. This is what we're talking about, condensation, until it attuned itself to the slower vibrations of the material plane earth and assumed an apparent solid physical body. Such materialization descended to the entire visible spectrum or seen universe. People in not only Earth, but all third-dimensional planets. Thus, the condensation of spirit builds the body that appears to be born. This is the actual picture of one drop of blood This is a three-month-old fetus called quantum graph photo from the quantum fear on field. It was created from a pregnant woman who was hundreds of miles away. And this is from just one drop of blood. So in her one drop of blood, it shows you the formation of the child in this one drop of blood. Get the book, Unshrouding the Secrets of the Soul. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. How about the big crew that just came here? We look forward to seeing y'all in this event this weekend. It's going to be on the 22nd to the 24th, so it'll be real dope to see y'all.
It's a wonderful opportunity to get inspired because really awesome people come and get a chance to network, you know, and meet people in your area. And also to get inspired to do the same thing in your own area. Who is Scottish? He's Brother Joffrey. Look forward to seeing you. Yeah. 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 Should be coming on Saturday. Can't make it on Friday. Okay. I'll tell Halim is back. All right. All right, this is what we also know about light and sound. This is what Dr. Leonard Horowitz states. The primary function of DNA is um, electromagnetic reception or electromagnetism and transmission. Less than 10%, more like 3%, of DNA functions involve protein manufacturing, and more than 90%, more like 97% functions in the realm of bioacoustics or bioelectrical signaling. Now, bioacoustics, acoustic, of course, we talk about signaling, that's sound. So we find out that melanin is a electronically active amorphous semiconductor, having superconductor capabilities. All right? This is what we do know. Yeah. All right? Then we have bioelectric signaling, which is light. All right? And melanin has its own DNA and is the most important substance in the human body. Carbon along with hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen um, links to form melanin, which has black hole properties. So when light comes in contact with black hole properties, it does not allow for the light to escape. In physics, a black body is known to be a perfect absorber or perfect radiator of all forms of light and energy. Okay, so when you're looking at melanin, melanin is able to um, take sound and take light and make it energy. All right. <clears throat> melanin, melanin can be viewed as a battery that is partially charged and can always accept an electrical charge with any in all full spectrum energy. When sunlight or other energies come in contact with the melanin battery, it increases the charge of the battery to a certain degree. Okay? So when sound and light comes in contact with the melanin, it increases from a semiconductor activity to a superconductive activity. And you want melanin to be a superconductor. All right? Uh, one of the sounds or words that can be used, remember, um, John tells you that the word of God was made flesh. So it means that words can become uh, physically manifested. So here we have Rod Netter Atif Nefer, which means God, sun rays, and nature are gracious to me. All right? A mantra that is designed to draw towards the user the life-giving warmth of the sun 
and protection over the lower south. So, Ra-Netur, Atif, Nefer. Ra-Netur, Atif, Nefer. All right? Ra-Netur. Ra-Netur, Atif, Nefer. All right? You want to chant it, then you would put it into a chant. And you would sound and make this particular sound during the time of when you were doing Qigong or when you're doing Tai Chi and you're practicing martial arts and you're bringing in the life-giving warmth of the sun to give you protection, particularly over your own lower self, to keep from getting conceited and arrogant. You want to remain humble. Okay. All right, so a good book in which that breaks this down um, is The Signs of Melanin, Dispelling the Myths by my good friend, Dr. Timothy Owen Moore, and also an article is called is human DNA reprogrammable with light, sound, frequency, and vibration? And of course, the answer is yes to all of them. As we just demonstrated with the bioacoustics, as well as also um, bio um, luminous um, aspects in which that uh, Lynn Harvey, Dr. Lynn Harvey spoke about. This is an article called Awakened Times. Um, is human DNA reprogrammable with light, sound, frequency, and vibration? And of course it is. And I'm going to read this little section here. It says right here, many people have compared human DNA to the Internet. It communicates in mute, um, immense amounts of information in micro, cosm uh, micro cosmically small but significant ways, mimicking a vast network of information portal, not unlike the billions of websites connected to one another all over the world. It may account for our intuition, spontaneous healing, and a number of other phenomena that mainstream science is just beginning to understand. All right? And what is that? It says, as though, as though to confirm the huge hunch uh, many of us have that our junk DNA was anything but disposable. Researchers from the gene and stem cell ther um, therapy program at Sydney um, Centenary Institute has proven that 97% of human DNA programs and encodes proteins in our bodies. One of the researchers involved in this study said this discovery involved what was previously referred to as junk opens up a new level of gene expression control. Gene expression control. So, with, as we said, with light, sound, frequency, and vibration, we can reprogram human DNA. That's what we do know. So, by chanting, all right, by visualizing very, um, particular colors of lights, and this is what you'll see, um, there's certain tones in which that can be utilized, all right? The seven chakras and sounds of healing, cosmic sounds as we refer to them as. Quick question. Yes. So... That means these vaccines, vaccines that they're giving out, 
at all. Gene therapy can alter our DNA to something else, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I, I got the information in the book. In the last chapter, that's exactly what I speak on. Mm. Yeah, what they're trying to do is stop and slow down what is called the guide gene. Um, it is a little bit too frustrating for them to continue trying to speak with people who are God-fearing and understand the science of God um, and have a creator who is higher than they are and can depend upon and talk to mentally and get things done. Uh, understanding that is the God in me. And this is the real signs of the Lord and personal Savior. When you speak of, when people say, oh, it's my Lord and personal Savior. You're right. My Lord and personal Savior. You're referring to your higher self. You're referring to the God within you. And the God within you is the God within me. However, we're having different experiences, different environmental influences. So the God in you learns about the earth and the ways of the world based on your experience, based on the things in which that you go through. While, while the God in me experience the things that I go through and what I've experienced in the world. Okay. And I'll demonstrate some more of that information in a few here. But... Um, we're talking about specifically the vowels, cosmic sounds of healing, and the vowels um, for the crown chakra is the eye tone, which is pronounced seven times. The third eye is the E for the back of the head. Medulla Magadha is the Y, which isn't up here. Um, the throat chakra is the A. The heart is A. Uh, a H, the solar plexus is ha H A H or ka or sh for the liver. Navel or sacrum is o. The base root chakra red is u. U. So these are the sounds of healing of each of your endocrine glands of each of your chakras. Okay, this is what this is. And if you went through each exercise, each one of them done seven times, you would feel a release. A release, a release of toxic energies in your auric field, like a weight been lifting up off your shoulders, as they would say. Remember, each one is pronounced seven times. <clears throat> All right, so Dr. Luke Montanier in 2011, DNA in water at seven hertz, spontaneous generation of DNA. All right, this is what he says. Sound in water at seven hertz, spontaneously generated DNA. One test tube had DNA in it, and the other the test tube was empty, and DNA miraculously appeared. Hence the saying, the word was made flesh and made in the image and after the likeness of God. And remember, your physical body is made up of 75% water. So Montanier, Luke Montanier, he was able to take sound and prove that sound has a 
transformative effect on human DNA. So and so till it produce DNA in another tube. So imagine if you had someone who was encouraging you your whole life and not ever saying anything negative to you, what you will accomplish, mm -hmm. what you would be. Someone who can tell you, you can do it. You can do anything. In fact, my wife and I listened to this um, little musical thing almost every day. And what's the name of it? Super Bloom. And also, what's the other one? We can do anything. Uh-huh. I'm going to find out who that's by. Right. Let me find out right now. So, this is the songs that we listen to on a daily basis because it helps to put positive positive reinforcement. And that's what we need. We need positive reinforcement. Listen to this um, shit hop, as I call it, negative rap, trap, rap, lack, whatever term that I, um, is not it. All right. But once again, this is shown through Dr. Emoto's experiment that he had with water. Dr. Emoto, um, he passed um, during the time of this pandemic, but he did experiments for years with water, showing a six-star configuration. It looks like snowflakes of when positive things were said and they froze the water and looked at it under a microscope and it looked six point of star configuration. When negative things were said in the water or to the water, the water looked discombobulated. It looked like a blob of so no structure, no order, no, it looked chaotic. Okay. I can do anything by Chris and Cheeb. T E E B. All right, that's the name of the guy. I can do anything. So, play that. Okay. This is just a little bit of it. We ain't gonna go all out, but this is something in which that you can listen to, in which that helps with positive. Oh, turn it up. It's turned up. It's just lower. Yeah. Taping all that down. I can do anything, cause I'm heavy on a being. Being all that, being all that, being without limits. Being my dream, that bond is what it seems. I get all them coins, I get all them strings, the energy, the money. I'm so creative. I'm finally so committed. I get it now. I'm grateful. I can do anything. All right, so just think about if you had someone or something as music as we once had telling you that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. What could you do? Literally anything. Mm -hmm. You 75% water. Sound put in water at 7 hertz was able to generate DNA. So we know sound has a very transformative effect on human DNA. This is what we do know. So this is why it's important on what you listen to. And it had to be at the heritage of 425 hertz instead of 440 hertz, which is very detrimental to us. So get in your mind. I can do anything. 
I can't do anything. Because you can. Because you can. We all have to get this in our minds. And the more we get in our minds, the more powerful we become. All right? And as the last thing, be looking at the waves, long wave rays and electrical rays, which is radio, TV, radar. We're looking at microwaves. We're looking at infrared rays. We're looking at the visible spectrum rays, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, which is called Roy G. Biv. We're also looking at what we refer to as ultraviolet rays, X-rays, and gamma rays. These are the seven-ray band, seven-ray band, all right? Now, when you get to the visible spectrum and you get the Roy G. Biv, that is within the third dimension. And this is part of what our eyes see, what is our optic nerves. So we look at red. Red is allegedly the slowest and lowest rate of vibration in the visible spectrum. Man evolved from the low, gross color of red through the entire color spectrum to the highest color, violet. Red projected on the body stimulates the liver, automatic nervous system, and the circulatory system. A red aura indicates a strong sexual force. It awakens our physical life force. It strengthens the overall energy level. It attracts, magnetizes, stimulates, and energizes. Orange, it gives life and promotes healing conditions of the stomach, intestines, pancreas, spleen, adrenaline glands, thyroid glands, muscular system. Orange stimulates the lungs, which is the respiratory system, by increasing the oxygen flow. It balances the emotions. Yellow, it stimulates the entire eliminative system, which is, of course, urine and defecation. The digestive system, lymph um, lymphatic system or glands, um, gallbladder, bladder, and the nerves. It builds the left hemisphere of the brain, ears, eyes, bones, brain. Um, and the gold shade of yellow is an excellent overall healing color. Right, then you have green. Right, green is a healing color. But then the spelf is the predominant color in the life force of the planet Earth. It balances our energies. It heals all heart ailments, increases the circulatory system. It stimulates the pituitary gland. It raises the vibration of the physical body above the vibration of disease. Heals all infections and builds cells and tissue. Green is the color of healing, teaching, and growth. A green auric field um, means that they are willing to work in order to gain wealth in terms of educational, cultural, and physical attainment. Blue is vital builder and creative forces. And creative forces. Um, um, somebody got a question? Somebody got a question? It heals. Elements of the respiratory system, throats, nose, ears, and eyes. It acts as antibiotic. It re, um, relieves all itching, irritation, fevers, and burns. Blue is very effective in easing all ch um, childhood diseases. It strengthens communication within relationships. It is used for astral projection and induces prophetic dreams. Indigo, it heals any hormonal imbalances that occur in the endocrine gland system and balances the two hemispheres of the brain. It acts as an antibiotic. It is also excellent blood purifier. It stops hemorrhaging, internal bleeding into the tissues and organs and nosebleeds. It is a stringent, tightening, firming, and tuning the flesh, skin, and nerves. All right, it depresses the heart, strengthens the enlarged heart. It can awaken gifts of intuition. And the last one is violet. 
Violet is also acting as an antibiotic. It stimulates the spleen, depresses the action of the appetite. It um, affects the nerve, heart, and lymphatic glands, and all over um, active parts of the body except the spleen and the parathyroid glands. It is the color of expansion in all forms, love, health, business, and money. The color violet offers the gifts of spiritual protection, knowledge of the higher realms of magic, the becoming of your higher potential, and the advancement or enhancement of prophetic powers. So these are the sciences of the colors. So you can take light, the various colors of light, and sound and use them to heal yourself. Okay? Um, so we're going to come back next week um, with the rest of the class. All right. Um, hopefully you'll get something from tonight's class, today's class. Um, are there any questions concerning anything that we've gone over? When did you say this book would be available? Um, it's going to be available um, probably within the next month or so. Um, we put it in. Um, we taking it to the publishers. Uh, um, ASAP. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> Good. Okay. 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 Peace, God. Peace, God. Hey, I uh, just want to. Hey, uh, just want to say I've, I've seen those familiars that you're talking about there. Um, I've seen oh yeah. Them, like, um, they look to me. They I saw them as like they were like these like black, almost shaped like a football, and they have like this fuzzy type. Mm -hmm. Um, well, looking, 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 look, 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 right, 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 yeah. It is how they also look. Sure is, God. Yeah. Dr. Alain, I got a couple of questions yeah. I want to ask. Okay, mm -hmm. um, before, I, before I hand in this um, W A B E N. I want to ask a few questions. questions. Okay, wait, okay, my first question is that from 6, 8, 6, 8, 7, and 8, was uh, number 8 the only one still out of the state of birth? Your date of birth? Yeah, yeah, that's on number 8. Uh, six, eight, uh -huh. six, six, seven. It, it, it seems like it didn't relate. It's, 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 it's like I have one. I can't. I can't. He said I can't okay, make okay. it. Okay. Saying it's on echo. echo. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me try it again. Six, A, six, B, and seven. It seemed to me that it didn't relate to me. W A D E N. If you want me to read what you put in those letters, it's, 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 it's your phone. It's your phone. You, you, you echo it. Oh, wow. I don't know how to speak that. Okay. okay. Audio. So he's so he asking should he fill out six A, B, and C and seven. All right, so I'm looking at it now. Okay, now six A. If you don't if you don't have a foreign tax number, then don't worry about it. You need to have a S S four. Okay. Okay. What about six B? Um, um, number, number six, six B, B put, put put in A. A. Put A. Non actable. Okay, in A. Okay. Just as number put in actable. Okay, in actable. In A. Right. And then for date of birth, of course, put put your date of birth. Okay. Now number seven. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Reference, Reference number? number? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a reference. Put in, in, 
In A. So put in A. Okay. 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 I got it. Okay. So, um, um, Nancy Sue. Nancy Sue. Number nine. Nine through ten. Yeah, number nine, it number says, nine, I certify, I certify the, the beneficial owner is a resident, resident. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, of, of, of that, that particular, particular state. state. Okay, okay, so, so just so put Ohio, 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 that's where I live at. Well, yeah, well, yeah Ohio. Ohio. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, all right. okay number okay, ten. ten. You can put actually from out the treaty. But this is what it's asking about. You see where it says treaty? Treaty? Oh, put it. Yeah, yeah. It said article and paragraph blank of the treaty. Identify by name. You see, this is this tax, is tax treaty, treaty benefit. benefit. So, so you go to, you go to United, United States, States peace, peace and, and friendship. friendship. Peace and friendship. Do okay, okay. Do, do. Do I write that in or do I go to a particular website? So you're going to so go on your Google, Google and you're going to go there, there so you can, so you can see, it. see it. Okay, on Google and go to where? where? Peace and Peace Friendship, and friendship treaty. treaty. Okay, Peace and Friendship Treaty. Brother Charles, check. Brother Charles, check, check, check your check. check. Okay, the chat. Okay, I got it. Go to the chat. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, guys showed up. I got it. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. So oh, he, he, he. do I put in the the Morocco American Treaty of Peace and Friendship twenty eight? Zoom? Yes, you can. Oh, okay. 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 So, so for the article. The article? Yeah, this, as you see here, this, there are 25 articles. Oh, 25 articles. So, so what do I write down in that plan? So, so you can say you can one say through twenty five articles. articles. Okay. okay. Or find or a find a specific article, article in which, which that relates, relates to the tax. Okay. 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 Just an article relate to the tax. Okay. 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 If I have any questions, I just, I just ask your wife. You know, kind of give it a Okay. 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 In, in Henderson, North Carolina, Carolina, you have to do, you have to do it between, between before, before June. June. Before June. For June. Okay. okay. For June and June, next. Are you making any changes? changes. Okay. okay. That's what That's I know this year. Okay. What okay. I'm going to do is go out there and read that and see what I can get from it. 
Okay, okay, I'm gonna put that on the website and go from there. Now, now, now once I'm through with all of that, uh, do they send me a call? Or anything like that? No, they don't send you nothing. Okay, so I just, just have to talk. Okay, I just yeah. make a call. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna send out this number 10 and I'm gonna see if you can help me with this. Say again? I said, I'm going to go on this website, and I'm going to try to find out what I'm going to find out on that last question. And I appreciate y'all having me. Okay. 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 Okay, if not, I'm going to say I see Washington East. I see Washington East. Washington East. I see Washington East. Mm-hmm. 